Hello, and welcome to my first episode of a platformer tutorial. And before I start, I'm going to talk about some things. So if you want to skip to the tutorial, I will put the timestamp on screen now. But if I go to Scratch, normally on the Explore page, there's some not very good platformers. I don't know if there's any on it right now. But normally there's a few kind of unoriginal boring platformers and in this tutorial what i'm gonna have the normal tutorial it just shows how to do scratch and stuff but then i'm also going to go and branch out and show different examples of how you can make it creative because once you figure out how to actually make a platformer game like if you understand how to make it then plat the, like platformer games don't really seem that interesting unless they have unless they're actually like genuinely good so to start out um you're gonna need two sprites for the one I'm going to use. I'm, uh, I might show other ways to make like tileable ones, but for now this is just going to be the simplest way. So on one sprite we're going to call this player. On the other sprite we're going to call it ground. So if you go to the player sprite, I'm going to start out by just making a simple like kind of squarish thing. Later I'll show how to do animations and hitboxes and stuff if I feel like it. So I have this, I'm not going to bother decorating it. And then for ground, I'm just going to make a simple box. Okay, this is a little more complex than a box, but it's fine. So for this, there's the only code we're going to need now, and probably this entire episode, is when flag clicked, go to zero, zero. Actually, we might add more later, but... So, and then player when flag clicked also goes to zero zero or wherever you want the player to spawn. Um, so for now you just have this. So what you're gonna want to do is first put a forever loop, obviously, and then you're gonna want to add a falling speed. So I'm gonna call this, there's a lot of things you could call it like, like Y velocity or Y vel or Y speed or what, or like vertical speed. I'll just go with like, y speed I guess because I don't know so set y speed to 0 at the start and change y speed by negative 1 because you want it so that the player will fall down now as you can see this kind of goes really fast but once we add more code in it will go back to normal speed and then say change y by y speed so as you can see it's pretty simple falling it actually doesn't go into the thousands instantly but now the player falls to the floor so you're going to do is do if and then detect if it's touching the object you can also do touching color and other things like that that that's not the right button so if touching and then set this to ground or whatever your sprite is called and then y speed zero so now you just kind of slow down and like sink through it. So what I'm going to do is something that seems kind of complex, but it's pretty simple. So repeat until not touching ground. Now this, what I'm going to do is this will either move the player up or down. Up if the player's speed was moving. So if the player is falling down, it's going to move the player up to get it out of the ground. But if the player is moving up, like jumping into the ceiling, it's going to move them down. So what you actually want to do is set the y speed afterwards, and then you're going to say change y by, and then you're going to need some division. So y speed divided by, and then do this to get the absolute value of y speed. So what this does is if y speed is equal to any positive number, it will be divided and become a positive number, because it will be... It, let's say it's 10, it'll be 10 divided by 10, which equals 10, I mean, which equals 1. If it's 100 or 20 or anything, it'll be the same. But if it's negative, it'll be negative 10 divided by 10, which will keep it a negative, but make it become either 1 or negative 1. But this still isn't complete because we have to make it negative now. So this will pretty simply do this. Now as you can see, the player gets stuck and then has to move out. We will fix that later. It's really simple to fix, and if you've seen my other tutorials, you might know what it is to fix that. Next, I'm going to add simple controls in. For this, I'm just going to have it be a consistent speed, but in later tutorials, I will show how to make a gradual speed and maybe some stuff like this. So what you're going to want to do is detect for the keys. So I'm going to be using left and right for this, but you can use WASD or obviously anything else. 
you could even if you wanted to like detect like positions of other things or stuff um you probably knew that so what you're going to do is change x by however much and change no that's y is change x by however much speed and the left one needs to be negative so i could say negative five and five and now as you can see i can move to the side now uh it's very broken as you can see when i hit this wall i go up to the top because you can't move until you finish being up at the top and you also when moving around on the floor move really slowly because it goes into the ground and then repositions itself but we will fix this later yet again so next we want to add side collisions because we're not just going to have the player go into it which is also really simple this one's actually simpler um and then once i add like x velocity we'll do something similar to this but for now we're just going to say if touching ground on each of these and we could say to just go back to its previous place but we want to actually be able to touch the wall not be near the wall so i'm going to say repeat until not touching ground and repeat until not touching ground on this one also and then just say change x by one and change back by negative one so that it will repeat a certain amount instead of just doing um, that one part. Now the one problem is if you get stuck in a wall, sometimes the game will lag a lot. But as you can see, you can no longer collide. With, you can no longer go through the walls. Next, I'm going to add jumping. So I'm going to do if key whatever pressed. You could do up, down, left, right. I don't know why you'd want to jump with down, but you can do whatever. I'm going to use up. All you need to do is say set y speed to 10. Well, no, that's not actually what I want to do. And I'm going to make it simply to si to make it simpler. I'm going to put this above the horizontal collisions. So as you can see, you can jump, but then you just fly into the sky. And you don't want that. Because normally you have to be touching the ground to jump. You can't just be like, woo, flying around. Woo, woo, woo. So it's pretty simple. All you need to do is say if touching ground. And then some other stuff, because that's not all of it. Do change y by negative, negative 2. You can do negative 1 probably, but I do negative 2 just to be safe. And then afterwards, change y by 2 to fix the positions. Now we can now we have working collisions, mostly. Um, as you can see, not everything works yet. As you can see, it's kind of glitchy still. So all you need to do is grab a block and say movement or whatever. If you want to like may allow other things you can do these things but i'm not going to use any of those so just put movement in here make sure you check the uh right without screen refresh box and now you have some nice smooth platforming but this isn't actually that good this is like the lowest you can go this is the minimum for a platformer game like let me show some examples so this first example is what if you have a diagonal like this a slope. Um, I'm also just going to add some other platforms in to make it actually possible to jump around the full area. But what if you have a slope? As you can see, you have to jump to go up the slope. You can't just go up it. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something pretty simple, which is it's when it hits a wall, it's going to check to see if by moving up a few pixels, it could it it would no longer be part of the wall. So what I'm going to do is say just, okay, this, I haven't actually done this yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a count variable. This is kind of complex. I haven't done it before, but yeah. So set count to zero and then repeat until, or actually, so if touching ground, set count to this. I'm going to get rid of this for now. Repeat until is greater than. Repeat until count is greater than, I'll say, 4. Repeat until count is greater than 4. Or, um, what's it called? Or not touching ground. Chain, and then change Y by 1. Actually, I can just say this. So repeat until count. So now when you go into a, a, a wall to the left, you just fly into the sky infinitely because count doesn't go up. So I need to say change count by one. So now you just kind of uh, levitate up to the top, as you can see, which we don't want. So I'm gonna do, 
is say if not touching ground set count I'll just say to 20 a number that's a lot higher than your maximum number here so as you can see um, that isn't happening ever for some reason okay so if I go up this slope the count should yeah the, the count becomes 20 suddenly so afterwards I'm gonna so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save the Y so I'm gonna get Y save okay so set Y save to Y position because we want to save where the Y is so that we can easily go back to it so I'm gonna have this and then I'm gonna say set Y to Y save which pretty much just does nothing now it this just goes back to before except now it saves what your Y was whenever you touch ground so <clears throat> I'm gonna need an if else so I'm gonna say if else count equals 20 which will be if it stops touching the ground so we only want this in the else we don't want it to do that um if the player moved up we don't want it to move the y back so i'm gonna have that and then i'm gonna say repeat until not touching ground change x by one and this should work so as you can see now it looks like everything works and it would except i haven't done the thing to the right so what you're gonna want to do is on the right code we're gonna grab this and we're gonna move it over here actually we can keep this and then we're gonna grab this and we're gonna change a few things and by that I mean this becomes negative one and other than that that's the same so now if I grab a slope going the other way I'm not sure how steep of a slope you can go but if I do this it should possibly work as you can see I can now go up and down slopes and make sure. so you can go up and down slopes but have good wall collisions and this isn't something I've actually ever done in my platformer so this is something new to me anyways this is probably all for episode one in the next episode I'm gonna show how to make fancier um, wa walking and I'm gonna show how to have death zones and anti-gravity and maybe some other stuff so if you enjoyed Thank you for enjoying this video.